Welcome back, everybody, to the next episode. As you can see in the prior episode, what we did was we filled all the voids with the epoxy thickening agent. And it's now dried. You'll see some of the scuff marks around it where I've gone through and actually sanded it. Pretty interesting because after I sanded it, unlike with the original polyester resin compound that was designed and used when they built the boat, that stuff makes a huge mess. The epoxy thickening agent, which is a combination of the half inch chop strand, epoxy, and the capicil was super easy not only to sand, but also it was really easy to pick up with just the shop vac over here. Really neat. So let's take a closer look as I've actually sanded a little bit right here and you can see using one of these guys here I believe this is 40 40 grit and I went through and just kind of smoothed off all the high high spots and I'll tell you the trick is when before you coat it with Kevlar or 1708 tabbing you need to make sure that you can do this especially with a rubber glove nitrile in this case and you want to make sure you're not snagging on anything because if you're snagging on anything number one you're gonna pull the weaving apart on your 1708 or your Kevlar and it's gonna look like garbage not that it really matters with it being under the floor but you don't want to tear this weave apart here and the second thing is if you've got a point or something where it's catching you're likely also gonna have a high spot right there and you're not gonna have a really good connection with the 1708 as it applies to the various parts of the um, fiberglass here or the marine grade plywood so keep that in mind like I said you don't want you want to make sure you can run your hand over it and that's how you know effectively you've sanded it pretty good as well so this is what it looks like what I'm gonna do now is I do have just a, a few small little voids here and the Kevlar is thin enough where it would probably fill in those gaps just fine but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out a length of Kevlar tabbing to go here and then what I'll do is I'll also mix up a little bit of epoxy thickening agent to just kinda quickly fill in some of these voids here and then I'll lay the Kevlar over top of it It'll create a nice smooth edge underneath. It'll give something for it to bond to and have that nice smooth little angle like you see here versus maybe a little little bumps and which you could kind of feel if you were here, you'd be able to see that right there. But it's not a big deal. I just I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I want to make sure it looks pretty good, even though no one will ever see this. Hopefully never would have to repair it either. But I tell you, this epoxy and this uh, thickening agent bond right here is just super strong. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and measure out some of the Kevlar tabbing. And I will go ahead and, and lay it out, make sure I've got enough of it for a good run. And like I said, with, with epoxy, you just need to be aware you it dries pretty quick. Pot life is going to be roughly, I mean it depends on the type of hardener you're using too. But as hot as it is today, I've got roughly maybe 10-15 minutes. So you don't want to you don't want to make more than you can use in one run, and you also don't want to use up all your buckets for a given day as well. So I try to mix a good amount, maybe roughly about three foot, and that should typically do what I'm going to do. So I'm going to probably go from right here all the way to that side. I like to show you a little bit more as I'm doing the actual tapping. The tricky part is you got 10 minutes not only to mix everything, you got every, uh, enough time to apply it and then paint it. It's hard to kind of stop a little bit there and get some recording in, but I'll try my best like I did in the prior episode kind of towards the end where I showed you some of the specifics about getting in here. But it's, it's the same whether you see it, me do it or you do it yourself. Just add a little bit of thickening agent here, not a lot. 
just enough to fill in. Here's a good one. Here's a good example. Like there's a little void right here. Nothing crazy. But your 1708 probably won't fill in there. Your Kevlar won't fill into this little gap that well, even if you try to use the the roller. And you may also have some air bubbles in there. So try to fill those as you can. I know it's it's a bit of a perfectionist kind of deal there. I mean, it already has a really good bond right there, but it's just that extra little bit that'll help keep your boat in a strong, super strengthful position for, geez, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years, probably even longer than that. Okay, so I have just applied a really thin coat of epoxy thickening compound. And if you recall what you just saw, this is what it looks like. So we're going to let this dry. And just remember in the world of epoxy, that's like 15-20 minutes. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the epoxy, just the epoxy itself. And we'll pre-coat it. Pre-coat this side. And then we'll go ahead and finish the uh, layout process, or the layout process for um, the Kevlar. Alright, so got everything tabbed. Everything that is going to be under the floor is effectively tabbed at this point. You can see along the edges we made sure we applied plenty of Kevlar. Really neat to see all this yellow underneath. I think it came out pretty good. There are some things that I'm going to do now that I have all of the tabbing in place under the flooring. And you can see as well, I completed the tabbing all the way up as high as the stringers will go because this is where the fuel tank will sit. And as you can imagine, water has to pass from the ski locker in through the bottom of the fuel cell. Right. And as I'm spinning around, you'll see the more t uh, tabbing going all the way up the corners. And we'll have to have a second hole going through that back um, bulkhead into the bilge area there. So that's kind of the the setup here, as you can see. All the joints have Kevlar wrapped around it. Infrastructure-wise, I'm pretty happy with what we got. We used quite a lot of Kevlar to achieve this as well as quite a lot of epoxy. I'd have to add it up in terms of how many yards that I use. If you're wondering about how much epoxy that I use this far along, this was roughly six gallons of epoxy using medium hardener. Just keep in mind you got about 10-15 minutes before it starts to harden up inside the uh, pot that you're using it in so you got to be kind of quick about it. As we zoom in a little bit I made sure I doubled up all the spots in the Kevlar to make sure we didn't allow any kind of areas of um, where there basically I didn't want to anywhere I join two pieces of Kevlar I want to make sure it's overlapped good so it's it's um, holds on to the strength and then a little closer shot here, as we talked about a little bit ago, is these corners, it's going to be potentially exposed to uh, water in this area. So what we want to do is make sure we, we seal up all the way as high as it can go to make sure no water can penetrate in through the stringers. And then obviously on the other side, we put Kevlar over there as well. So completely sealed up. And then same thing inside the ski locker. All the corners have been effectively sealed off all the way. And that's the way to do it. So I'm pretty happy with the way the tabbing came out. The epoxy and Kevlar in general, just absolutely fantastic products. I believe the Kevlar is a product of DuPont. But yeah, it came out, came out pretty good. You notice in here in the bilge area, I haven't applied the epoxy thickening agent yet. That's because it's not necessarily required at this point, mainly because I can put all the flooring in 
and then work on this area afterwards. That's kind of my goal. Just kind of want to concentrate on getting the uh, flooring pieces installed. But that's what it looks like so far here. What I'm going to do next as part of the fuel cell install piece is I need to drill a hole to allow water to come in through the ski locker. And if you also have like a, if you're leaving the boat outside and the ski locker gets water in it, you want to let it be able to drain. So we're going to drill a hole just like we did in the transom as low as we can here. And then same thing on the opposite end. And what we're going to use just like we used on the transom is we're going to use a brass uh, drain. All right. And these are the two drains. These are the C-Sense brands, they're brass. I've used them on uh, prior projects and been pretty impressed with them so far. One of the things to notice here is this is the tool that you use to flare out this. The minimum depth that you can have, as you can see here, is going to be greater than three quarters. So what I'm likely gonna do in this case is probably take and butt up another three-quarter piece of marine grade plywood here and same thing on the other side. I won't do it on the ski locker side just because I like to try to keep that uh, flush over here but I'll likely go ahead and attach and screw another three-quarter sheet here just a little one and then we'll we'll drain uh, we'll drill it out and then go ahead and go through and make sure it is sealed up good. We'll use marine grade adhesive through it just like we did on the transom make sure it doesn't leak and we'll repeat that on the other side so keep that in mind when you're doing this you got a few different options the boat originally just had a hole drilled through it you could do that keep in mind that is an option but that's not how i roll i try to keep everything i try to keep all the wood sealed off at all times and have it not exposed to any kind of water the same thing here why this eventually is going to get sealed up and it won't be exposed it'll have a, a coating on it Right, so there we go. This is what it looks like on all four sides. And to talk about what we did here was I attached a piece of half inch marine grade plywood to the three quarter here. And I used stainless steel screws and I filled the hole with some PL Marine to seal the wood from the inside of the brass. And then I went through and layered Kevlar around the wood just for added benefit. You never know. It's not really necessary, but since this is an area that would be in regular contact with water, I just wanted to make sure it was completely sealed off so you can kind of see what it looks like there. And as we flip around here, you can kind of see what this side looks like as well. I got a little bit more Kevlar to put around the edges you can see a little bit of exposed wood but it's kind of tedious making the uh, the cuts just perfect there but that's one more to do and I've also completed it on the other side you'll see those little squares as well on the left and right side that's where I actually put a little piece of Kevlar over the screw heads that I had um, actually put in there just to make sure they don't back out or they don't have any issues where the wood maybe expands all right, so I think it's looking pretty good. Lots and lots of Kevlar on this one. So as always, like the video if you thought it was helpful. Leave me some comments if you got some questions. And hit that subscribe button too if you don't mind. It's a picture of me riding in the boat. Let me know how I'm doing here. If you got any questions or anything, I'd be more than happy to help you out. Typically it takes me almost about a day, maybe sometimes up to a week to get back with you. But be uh, more, inter more than interested to hear what you got to say. As always, we'll hit you up on the next episode. Have a good one.